What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Lindsay, how's everything going for you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good. I appreciate you being here. I'm sure everybody else appreciates you being here. We're going to get started kind of just going over the week, talking about a couple of things to bring you guys, the YouTube podcast audience, wherever you're listening or watching. Again, we just appreciate you being here. It's been a slow week for us. Again, now September 17th is today, following last week where we really just saw a couple of ideas presenting, a lot of it where the timing wasn't lining up, at least for me being on the East Coast. You know, Lindsay, some of the trades were happening even before you started trading yeah, here in the yeah. UK. So some of the timing just didn't work out for us, but I think what we've done really well, and the first thing that I want to talk about is just how many people in the group are all being patient. Whereas if you go back, you said this yesterday, like two years ago, a year ago, you would have had so many people every day this week being like, where's the trades? Where's the trades? And that can lead you to forcing trades, going yeah. off your edge, taking less probable trades that can really just start you down on the week when all you needed to do was wait. So what do you think has been like the main push to have so many people um, okay with the idea of having no trade days? Because it's counterintuitive to why we got into trading. We got into trading to trade every day, to make the millions, to get the Lambo, to do the whole thing. So how do you think so many people are now kind of switching that, that switch in their brain? I, I first of all want to see how proud I am of them because as I said before, coming in, you know, I used to see in the chat, it was so active. They were all taking the C setups, less yep. probable trades. and Every, every idea. idea, every, every idea. idea they, were, they were taking. So they weren't just generating the ideas, but they were pulling the trigger on the idea. And it's just amazing to see that these traders have come into the community. They're growing and evolving. But I think what it really comes down to is seeing what the successful traders are doing. And seeing that ourselves are not in pulling the trigger we're coming across and saying you know what's been working for us and i know for me and for you taking the le taking none of the less probable the c setups has been better in our favor and just taking 100%. the b setup and the a setups and i think that's now rubbing off on them because they have saw that we've had good successful months but we're taking less trades Right. So it's like leading by example, so to speak, yeah. and leading with that idea of less is more. But yeah. that's a tough, yeah. like I said, like again, I think it's still tough, tough for some. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So have you ever, like when you first came to ASFX, did you struggle with that? Because I think you've said before in some of our videos that a couple of months ago, even you were taking more C setups than what you're yeah. taking now. Yeah. What, yeah. what pushed you to take, like cutting them out completely? Was it just because seeing me do it or was it other, what, what else was it? See, of course, seeing yourself do it because okay. I knew that well Austin wasn't doing it so why am I doing it he's the one that really has tested and proven the system sure, yes, sure. I went back and tested it but I haven't done it to the degree that you have just experience so, just experience and seeing that but at yeah. the same time I don't want to get into the rut that I have to take more C setups because of less percent on them right where I can go in and wait on the B setup and hit it with bigger Harder. size now this is actually something I spoke about in the chat today about mm -hmm. But it all comes down to your personal risk, risk appetite. For me personally, I don't want to take the flat percent across the board. Right. On, that's why we grade for setups because I right. feel that when you have back test the system and you feel so confident in your A and B setups, you've got to give them the appropriate size for you and yep. what that trade's worth. It's weird because I feel like you'll get to this point in the thought process as a trader listening to this in in the group, especially you'll get there and you'll be like, okay, I understand I'm not going to take a lot of trades. And then it gets them to the point of being okay with it even. And they're like, yo, this is fine. I'm, I'm take, I'm avoiding trades and I'm cool with it. But then what happens is when those A and B setups present, I find that sometimes they hesitate too. So how have yes. you balanced not hesitating, but, but still I cutting them? those trades out. And that is something that I said. I think that comes down to how much you have back tested the setups. And so you give yourself confidence by doing more testing. Yes, yes. Mm. And how disciplined and strict you are with your grading of the setup. Sure. So like when you look at a setup and if you really are following the checklist, it should be almost unemotional whether this unemotional. is you A, B, or C attached. at all. And no, once you, you get that grade, yes. So if you get to the point where you're like, this is a B setup, I like this trade, I'm going to turn my screen on in a second, we'll look at some charts. But if you get yeah. to the point where it's like, this is a B, then you know, if you give it that B, then you have to be putting something into the trade. Is that kind of where yeah. the mindset has been? Yeah, yeah. Got yeah. it, got it. So you're like, if I can back myself into the corner almost of, 
there's nothing wrong with this except one thing. One okay, thing. I, ha I have to be in this trade. Yes. Or there's nothing yes. wrong with this at all. Okay, I have yes. to be in this trade. You know what I mean? Um, and that, I that's a good approach. That. It's rather than yes. looking at it like how much money can I make? How much do I need to hit this to go make a thousand or ten thousand, whatever the number is that you make up? It's literally the opposite of it's instead of how much money do I make, how much do I need to risk to right. still see if I can make money on this yes. probability setup? Yes. It's an interesting approach, but I think it's what led you to so much success over the last few months. Uh-huh. I, I I agree. I agree. And I think that's what it comes down to, you have to get your balance of you okay with word. that, and that's your that's your risk appetite for you, and that's why I, I really put it out that every trader is different. 100%. So you have to have to go on what is working for what is working for you. You need to know what you're working for, and regardless of that outcome, if I hit that B and that trade doesn't go for me, I'm just going to tap myself in the back and say I followed my plan. That's what you like, can do. On to the next one. At the same time as we talk about like this side of the argument, which is cut the C setups out, take the pickier setups and hit them the right way. You can also, I think it's not me and I don't think it's you, mm -hmm. but I think you can take some of the C setups yeah. and add that into your plan. And you're going to take smaller trades and you might take a couple of more losses and a couple of small wins here, yeah. but there are guys that build that into their plan. So we don't want to bash the idea nope, of nope. taking some of those trades because you just need to work the math of those probabilities into your favor. And I, and think, I think like you also, said, where that comes in is the testing, but what were you saying? Yes, and I, I, I think also it comes down to what are the knocks on the C setups? Give me an so example, be you, specific. So if you had one that had slight di divergence, but I would- but Wait, should it, I share my GCAT idea while you talk about this? It's the same, yeah, right? We can yeah. use that as an so example. I could say that there was some, there was divergence on the bottom, but, RSI hadn't oversold or overbought. So that that's a knock. And it. I'm just trying to think of another one. Maybe, um, what else could it be? I'm just Look trying over, to think of something. So something even that's like, not- Even like the right leg on this formation. Yes. Like it, so like here, because this is a two candle formation. Yes. If this setup had no divergence on top and had not hit overbought right here, then the only issue with this formation is that is that right, right leg? leg, yeah, it could have been better. It could have closed two pips higher. But if that's the only thing wrong with it, you know the next candle could be bullish and you'd be good to go and you would have wanted to be in that trade. So in that yeah. situation, when there's nothing except one little thing, then that's where I am more likely to take the trade. Yeah. But I feel like some of the setups where if you actually zoom out and look at this, okay, wait a minute, we have divergence. Okay, wait a minute, we have... Um, the fact that it's overbought and oh, the fact yeah. that it's a week. Okay. Now all of a sudden I went from one small little knock to three. Yeah. 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 It completely changes the probabilities of the trade well, we and look at where our, this trade went. Yes. And we know our major knocks for our criteria on our checklist. Divergence, so, ADR, Asian range, Asian range. L50, swapping, swapping L50. Yeah. Yep. EMA is not aligned. hundred no. percent. Yep. Yep. Well, we know there's like maybe five high things that we have on our criteria that we Agreed. look for, but we Agreed. also have nine. We also have minor things. So maybe when we go to the one hour, there's eight hundreds in the way, or right. you know, all these wee minor things. But if you've got so many minor things, they you're you're going to add them up to maybe like three minor well, things. So you're, exactly. you're still going to take that into your to your grading. Exactly. So it's all it's all what you feel comfortable. I know for me, I don't want to trade if the eight hundred's in my way and I don't have risk reward on the one hour. Even though right. it's not a thing on our checklist criteria, it's still something I don't like. So it all comes down to the individual. So and that the, way they've got to sift through. I agree with you one hundred percent. That was very very well put. Let's walk everybody through this example here on your OJPY to show them how we would kind of mark this up, so to speak. So. Yeah. First thing that I'll point out is ADR right here. It's 93 yep. pips. Up yep. to this point in the day, the Asian range, if we measure it, it is exactly, hold on, exactly 77 pips, okay? Yep. So that leaves you with about 20, a little less than 20, about 14, 15 pips mm -hmm. or so in ADR to see this thing move past the pin high or the pin low. So first thing off the jump that I notice when I come to this this morning is that isn't great comparative yeah. to GCAD where it's got 120 to still move. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's yeah. the first thing. What's the next thing you noticed on this one? I think I'm going to get, exactly. Do you draw that? Now this is touchy. Do you draw that here from yesterday's 1030 RSI yeah. low, or do you draw it from today's R? Cause here's the day separator. This is the RSI low today. Do you draw it like this 
So I I have it both. I have I have it from yesterday coming down. Okay. okay. And I also have it from today. So interesting. So just, just like that, right? This, I actually think we spoke about this in one of our videos last week about the how, double the double how divergence. Do we, yes. How do we weigh that and if we have it coming in from yesterday, but we also have it present on today. Just like that, right? Those two lines, yeah. basically. Yeah. Yeah. So now, so, when you're looking, okay, keep going. No, on you go. No, on you go. No. So I was going to say, when you were looking at this setup around yeah. the 50 EMA, maybe off yeah. the 21 EMA, looking for some type of candle formation, what we're then doing, and this is, I know we both do it the same way, we're looking to see, okay, if I need to risk 13 pips, how much can I make to the divergence line? Well, if I can get 2R, then I'm going to be more interested in trading to the divergence. But on the setups that we will grade, like where divergence is in the way and we'll grade yeah. down, you would see that, for example, like on GCAD today. So if you were to take this long here on this two candle, eight, this it's not even it's 0.88R, not even 1R yeah. to that divergence line. Whereas again, here on EJ, you got 2R. So that to me, like, and what did, did you measure that to about 2R? Did you see that as well from where you were looking? Yeah, because I, uh, I looked at it from taking it as a D1 off the one minute. Got it. So you pull up the one minute. Re, so in the retest of the 50, I got a tighter stop. Was this Why? the divergence you were looking at right in here? Just that small little divergence right there? Yes, yes. Very, very, very fast. Very, 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 very small. And that that's another reason why I would keep that as an idea because I don't like trading divergence as quick as that. I like yeah. to see it build. Yeah, I agree 100%. But, but what do you think if, about this? Look, I see it. it as divergent, it's divergent and it still presents and gives you the retest. Yeah, see, there's that retest. That's what I was yeah. going to say because what we would look for at least what we've been talking about, like something here, short here, stop loss somewhere in here to yes. see it come lower off of that. Yes. Let's erase this and where your entry on the 15 minute would look like there. Yeah, right about the same spot. So at that mm -hmm. point, you'd be looking at like a five or six pip stop six. maybe. Yeah. It was, it was six what you measured? Yeah. So six you had space to low mm -hmm. a day. You had space to give you four R. Four R, uh -huh. and, and look, it actually does hold that level even yeah. with these pins. So yeah. it's still lining up to look like a decent D1 even mm -hmm. with the divergence on the 15 minute and even inside the Asian range. But to me, yeah. I want to just backtrack for a quick second. Now that we've put the whole kind of picture together, knowing that there's not a lot of space left on ADR, one big thing, knowing, and not, not a big thing, I'll say it's just one thing. The yeah. bigger things being in the Asian range, you yeah. see that on the 15 yeah. minute and divergent. That automatically to me, it's a C setup. Are C you setup. the same way with that kind of thing? Yeah. yeah. Even with the good risk reward, it's still something where I think both of us would just leave this market up as yeah. an idea. Hey, if this was out of the Asian range and, or maybe there's no divergence, then it's a lot harder to keep me out of that trade. But in this situation, I can read this. I can tell you it's coming short. It's been falling since how many days now? One, two, the last four days it's been falling. Of course yeah. we think it's going to, you know what I mean? That's an easy yeah. read on the direction. I, would take, I have, um, for D ones, cause I know mm -hmm. a lot of my coaching clients will watch this. Mm -hmm. I do typically would trade in the Asia range, but I've got to have no divergence. And, no divert. and here you've got two sets you've got from I yesterday and sets. you've got from today. And then the yes. funny thing is, is like, I still have a feeling in my gut that this is going to come lower today, you know? So even when everything is there, you can yes. still feel like it's going to come lower, but still looking at the chart, what does it tell you? Check the checklist, see setup next. That feeling in the gut has to be disregarded. You can't yeah. trade because of a feeling. I don't, you know yeah, I, mean? I don't like the see setup feeling either. Yeah, I, exactly. No second see, you know, we're, we're, we're emotionless and we don't have emotions attached. It's yeah. not really about emotion. I just don't like the feeling because no, I know 100%. that there's not. I know that there's knocks on 100%. my um, checklist. So in that situation, I would rather sit it out and then go with my higher probability setups and give them a wee bit more risk. What do you What do you think about right here? How it also hits oversold. So now you're divergent. You're in the Asian yes. range. You already hit oversold today. Okay. If you lost this trade, you'd be like, mm -hmm. "Oh, no wonder I lost this trade." There's a bunch of stuff wrong with it. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So I would rather sit flat than take C setups. Really. That's hard though. That's so hard, hard for so many hard. people to say. Yeah. What and do it, you it, think? it is hard because obviously as yeah. traders, we, we, want, to we trade. want to trade. Yeah. We're not gonna lie, we want to trade, we want to be in the market. Of course, of course we do, that's why we do what we do. Yeah. But at the same time, I know that these trades can be a loss. Yes. And yeah, so can my B setups be a loss. I get that as well. But sure. these are less probable. For sure. So on a day like today, another thing we should talk about 
It's been a slow week we're coming to the end of the week here. It's harder to sit on your hands, but we're doing a good job as you can see yeah, grading the setups, yeah. even with GCAD not jumping in, just leave it as an idea. Yeah. The reason we didn't take GCAD, even as it kind of was getting everybody a little antsy, not antsy, but just getting ready to take a trade, is because of this high impact GBP news that was coming in at seven o'clock, which is what tanked these GBP pairs. But I want to talk to you and kind of give everybody else some input on the idea of trading into the news, because a lot of people were looking at GBP, JPY, and they were like, I could have shorted this into the news, especially when they took it down to the one minute and they were looking at it like here at the 800 EMA. Yeah. A lot of people were saying, well, yeah. if I put my short in here and I put my stop at the top at 96, this would not have stopped me out. And I have to always in hindsight, try to explain that when news hits here at, um, at seven o'clock, when that news comes in, this candle is big, big, but the spread is even bigger. Yeah. So it's going to yeah, stop you out. Never, that, or even if it, even if you had waited to take this candle coming off the 800, that's when you're talking about, was it 12.01? Yeah. But there's no way you could have jumped in that because the spread- well, it's middle of news. Down. Yeah, it's middle of news. It could go like this. Yeah, it could chop. You don't know, you know? And then literally look at GCAD just to, I mean, even this one, the volatility here on that news bar, it's 65 yes. pips there on GJ. On GCAD, it moved 100 pips. Literally, it dropped 105 pips in one 15-minute bar. Yeah, I so, had, um, GJ, how could you trade that? No, I, can, I had it as an idea because obviously I was watching it. Yeah. And the same things like I spoke about, I liked coming off the 50. I liked the EMAs on it. I liked that it wasn't oversold although it still was in the Asia range. So this is when it comes down to what we're just talking about. Right. So although it was in the Asia range, it wasn't oversold. The divergence to me wasn't significant because it hadn't been oversold. Right here. Yeah. Yep. So I see that and that makes a lot of sense. So you would be looking to trade down to that. So but I like you said, trade down, yeah. but yeah. because you, so my, I think I looked and when my signal presented, it was around half past 11. And I knew that news was coming out at 12, my time, UK time. Yep. So I, can't half take an hour, I cannot yeah. take the risk in half an hour if it was going to move in my favour. Because you, you know, leading up to high impact news, usually the market chops. 100%. And what? You're going to take the trade for two to one, maybe three yeah. to one, risking yeah. into the divergence yeah. where, yeah. wait a minute, I'm in the Asian range, swapping liquid 50, yeah. two big knocks for me. And yeah. I have divergence today on this pivot point. Look at the S1 pivot. Yeah, so yeah, into, yeah. And I'm going into news. It could easily yeah. hit that and fucking take off yeah. and bounce higher. So it's like, and why I take that risk? We, we come off and we say, you know, yes, I have it written. Higher time frames are on my favor. Yes, they yes. were. But yeah. I'm executing on the 15 minute. So I have to weigh my probabilities on the 15 minute. 100%. I, I can't stress that enough too. So I'm glad that you brought that up because I think a lot of people get caught up in, oh, the one hour is long bias, the four hours long bias. I got to buy it. That's a great, great mentality to be in, yeah. but that doesn't mean buy it right now. You need to get to the shorter time frame, the 15 minute and find that exact risk reward opportunity, that exact yeah. timing to get into that direction, to get into that move. Cause we've seen it. Some of these perfect liquid 50s, where that really does tell us the trend, right? Mm -hmm. They will chop for a good chunk of the day, but then still make their move yep. higher or lower following that liquid 50. So it's like, you could be right on direction, but if your timing is off, you could get chopped up and you yep. don't want to get stuck in that. So it's yep. really important. And the news can do that too. We should also say that, right? I've seen some yep. high impact news events, not just tank or move higher like this. They chop around. They cause yep. big wicks in both directions and then they end up 30 minutes later, making the move that they wanted to move, you know? Yeah. So it's very tough to trade into that high impact news. And I feel like we have to continue to push that message because there's a lot of people that are trying to trade NFP. Mm -hmm. You saw the guys in the chat this morning, they were talking about, remember the days I used to put a buy and a sell before news <laughs> and I would close one of them. I'm like, that is insane. You know what I mean? Whereas everything else we do tries to shift our probabilities in our favor. Why would you gamble on a volatile news event? You know? Yeah. And you can, you can, if you just look across the board at the, British pound pairs leading up to the news coming out at 12. They yeah. basically did just chop, so they just moved sideways yeah. until that news came out. Yep, 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 100%. Do you think the divergence on top of GCAD played any impact into it coming down? Yeah, I, I, I probably do. Yep. You can't say and it didn't, me, right? Yeah, and I still, I know it's been moving higher all week, but I still don't like the higher time frame EMAs on it. So that was that is another thing that I thought about diversity. Because they're short biased. Because they're short biased. Yeah, yeah, interesting. So it's like and almost the news would, came, it it would use news of, to kick back in. Yes. Yeah, interesting. 
And if you look at GCAD, we're still just t testing that high. It was up at when it fell away back on the 10th. And it's, it's came back to that level today, and then it's fall, it's been fall mm. back down. Right, right there, I see that. Yep, yep. It's like, I mean, because last week we saw a big drop. But now look, it's taken all this week to just pull back to one day of drop. You know what I mean? The big, yeah. it's taken all week just to recover that little so bit. It'll be interesting to see if it just has this drop by news and then come back up again, or right. what it does. Or if this is like the drop that'll then kick it back into the okay. downtrend now. Yeah. But it's weird yeah. too, because this was what doesn't make any sense to me. And this is another reason why I don't think I'll ever trade news. The news was exactly as forecast not only that, it was exactly the same as last time. I know, I know. So how are they going to have this massive 100 pip reaction when it was exactly the same and crazy. exactly as forecast? Yep. Doesn't make any sense. It's crazy. it's crazy to see how they were going up and now they've just fell away. Yeah. So now, is there anything that you would tell everybody who's listening um, as far, like just to stay sharp, to stay patient and to stay okay because look, you go on social media and you see all these people who are trading and making money and trading and making money. It makes you want to even trade even more. So how do you stay cool? I mean, I know you're not super active in the chat anymore, but you're always on Instagram. So how do you stay even? Yeah, for me, I if I go back to where I was at when I first came in when I was doing that and just using market structure, not really looking at the overall fall in the trend and catching you know the momentum of the day, my emotions yeah. were everywhere, everywhere. And I didn't, I didn't enjoy it because I didn't like being in that mental state of, oh, I need to catch that trade, I need to catch that trade, and just jumping into trade because it maybe broke out and it's shown some momentum going higher or whatever it may be. I didn't like it. So for me now, having precise rules and following the trend keeps me very much motionless in my trading, which I really love. And even coming back to me being at home full time, my kids and my husband can see that I'm not that person I was when I was just trying to catch trades and That's amazing. And That's amazing. Hammer and collected and- You're actually know. like a professional trader now. You're not yeah. just gambling. Uh-huh. And that's probably where I was at when when I was like, came through my paces. Yeah, at, oh, 100%. Stage, I was trying to catch, the, catch momentum and I would, you know, execute a trade just on a, on a momentum candle. I wouldn't even- Of course. If I felt volume, I was in. Right. But I now, like, everybody can good. see that that was, I mean, you were gambling your time and you're gambling your money away at that point. Yeah. So it is, it actually is, so, you never told me that. It's cool to see your family, like, noticing that your trading behavior yeah, is I different. Yeah, like, if I was in the trade and the trade went against me, I was so crab at, like, oh you're my mad. God. Yeah, all mad. trading, I'm suck, I, uh, trading sucks, I yeah. Mad. Uh, but now, I it's the opposite. You're, you, you, you don't even care. No, you see, now I don't even I don't even care. And, God knows, and now you don't even lose. When was the last time you lost? I know, I know. Right. So, yes, it, I mean. I, 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 either I'm winning or I'm flat. Exactly. That's the best, really that is the best I thing really to be. Um, I, the last loss, the last loss was. June, May. I remember, it was, G, it was G, no, it was GG. Um, when was that? Oh, it was a while. Yeah. May? May. Yeah. Well, and now it's September. Um. But no, I just think that that's amazing to, for well, your family you to see it to too. That, but what I was going to say was about now, yeah. present time, that, you know, for me, I see so many traders say they come to the market, the market's beat, and they don't stay in their trading session. And this is what frustrates me. And, and they get off the chart, you're saying? Like they walk away? Yes. And, and you want them to stay at the desk? I want them to stay at the, the desk and generate ideas, do markups, watch the market, practice. Get the reps in. Uh-huh. I think that's the only way. If, we were to, if I was to have walked off this desk every trading session this week, I would, would not learn anything. anything. You would not learn I would anything. Have learned anything this week. No. So what I but there's a difference. Wait, you're, you're overlooking the fact that a lot of people don't love trading. They love making money. I think you and me yeah. actually love the challenge of yeah, trading, yeah. which is why yeah. we still show up. So again, it really is. Trading isn't for everybody. Making money yeah. is for everybody. Everybody likes making money, but that doesn't mm -hmm. mean trading is for everybody just because trading no. is so closely tied to making money. Yes, and people, like that. You got to find if you love it. And if you love it, then yeah. you're going to do everything that yeah. you're saying. And I think they all will go through the same transition that you've gone through and they'll, their families will see it just like yours and mine have, where they see you go from this gambling, staring at the charts all day, taking crazy trades, not being able to share any of your ideas, but being I'm, that I'm person. So to, funny because I've actually got that feeling of what it was like, do you know that? I'm actually kind of sweating here to think about it. And I can remember like, I would be sitting in my kitchen because I didn't have my trading desk at the time. 
yep. and you know I, I keep it real my journey and I used to say to Gordon Gordon this is this candy is pushing it's pushing well I enter well I press, well, I press the button <laughs> crazy right crazy to think that that was how you oh. used to trade it's insane uh -huh. but but that just should show everybody like I'm so glad that you shared because like it should show everybody oh, right. there's a lot of ways to do trading and there's a lot of ways to do it wrong so you have to really fall in love with it, like I said, and then find a winning process, find something that's actually going to teach you how to just do the same winning yep. process over okay. and over and over again. Yep. And you're a perfect example of that because you've transitioned from taking every trade, chasing momentum, chasing ideas to saying, no, cut that out. I'm going to get better results if I even do less. I, you did it and you got better results. Like you I actually said. did it and now people can yep. see the transition. Yep. So it's not just me saying to do it because it worked for me. Now it's you yep. and now it's Ryan and now it's uh, Jace and now it's Mateo and now it's all I'm thinking like Emmanuel Jerome like all these yeah, other people yeah. that are now going from crazy traders that were trading every and not that they're bad ideas like Emmanuel is the guy I think about like he's he's a great trader but yeah. now being with ASFX just he's learning amazing. the value of less he's now yeah he's amazing now but he's gonna he be is better. um because he was one of my coaching clients and he very much is like me he's consistent he's he's so disciplined so and disciplined loves, so detailed detailed and he loves trading he, he loves, loves trading. trading. That, he that, he that, is definitely. always at his desk and always in the chat. And I'm like, dude, are you off the charts at all? And he's not. Yeah. He loves no. it that loves much. It. But that's yeah. what you need. You need that, yeah. I think. As much as like and you I would want to say, like, because in our guy, yeah, the, yeah, the guys who love it and who are passionate about it and who are at their desk, and they they're time. passionate about getting better. They like it because it makes yeah. them get better. Yeah, yeah. because it's a challenge. Yourself, you can see yourself growing and evolving. Yeah. And I think that's, the that's the most motivating thing ever. That's the most motivating. Exactly. Because when I, and again, I think it's a, like a certain kind of person. Some people do not like to be yeah. faced with challenges that will force them to grow. They're not going to do well in trading. But the people that are like, I'll take any challenge on, I'll learn as much as I need to learn to master something that will give yeah. me what I want, yeah. those people, they do very well. So, yeah. no, I think it's been good. And I hope that we can continue to do these videos. We have yeah. a webinar coming up this weekend. Continue to do the things that we do to set the standard. Like, and so it's crazy. Somebody was talking to me, like they wrote another article about me. Um, some Forex guy just wrote a blog about his top Forex people that he follows. <laughs> and like, we're becoming known for not flashing anything except value. Just teaching people yeah. the experience that we've had, sharing that experience and letting people take it and run with it and become more successful than us because that's what we actually want for them. We're not here to just suck a monthly out of somebody's pocket and say we want them to be better, but really we're slowly draining them. You know what I'm saying? So I think that we can continue to push that message, can continue to push the message of patience and not gambling with your time and your money. I think we're just going to continue to grow and help people become more independent and become yeah. more financially free. Which is, so, yeah. And now hopefully COVID will end soon and we can get back to doing live events. I'm ready to rent a bus and start traveling around doing ASFX oh, events wherever we can. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. But no, this is, I know and we got to do one in the UK soon. I'm, I'm, I'm making it happen. I'm not, yeah. I will not stop until we are COVID free and we can have some more trading events. But yeah. no, this is good. I'm, I'm glad that we're able to get this video done for everybody. So if you're listening or you're watching, wherever you're at, Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, Mars, wherever you're watching or listening, <laughs> drop a comment. Let us know if you have any questions. As always, you can reach out to me or Lindsay on Instagram or email, whatever you'd want to do. Just get a hold of us if you need anything. And we appreciate the time as always. So Lindsay, thank you. I appreciate Thanks you. Thanks for having me again. All right, everybody. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.